So everybody knows if you follow me, if you know me, I don't like Nick Sirianni. I want him fired. I've always wanted him fired since the day he spoke his opening press conference. I wanted him fired. But let's just have like a real conversation. He the when he wins, he gets credit for these wins, and I I just don't I don't understand the real value of him, especially now when he doesn't do anything, and the team just looks ill prepared. They look like they don't function properly. And you bring in a new OC, you bring in a new DC. None of us like the style of defense. Philadelphia wants one kind of defense. And when we can't get that, everything else just falls behind the wayside. You you don't have a good pass rusher. You let the best one we had in the last four years go. And you picked up the young kid. And it's just like we have so many problems everywhere. But it starts with the head coach. Then it goes down to the assistant coaches. And the team just doesn't look prepared. They don't look ready to go. Now, I thought this game was going to be a problem because of the weather, because of the storm, because of water, all that kind of stuff. It wasn't. It was just hot. And I, and I get that it is hard to play in the heat. I'm not saying anything against that. And I know that the home field does have an advantage to that because they're used to that heat. But you get whooped everywhere you go, whether you're in another country, whether you're in cold weather, rain, wet, like it doesn't matter. You're not putting up any points in first quarters for every game you play, no matter who you play. And at some point, waiting for a Saquon Barkley 60-yard run is not going to get the job done. But Nick's a good coach. Nick's got the team together. Nick's a motivator. Real interested to see if he talks to the team after the loss today or if he lets one of the captains do it because, you know, he doesn't really do much. But if he lets the captain speak, it better not be Jalen. Dog, you keep turning the ball over. It looks terrible, too, in the face of Baker Mayfield getting destroyed by sweat, swatting at the ball, and him just gripping it one-handed with pinkies because he knows he can't drop this ball. You need to have ball security drills. Time to get back out and have a little fumble pad or whatever, how embarrassing it was. Like, you've got an issue with turnovers. You threw that pick that wasn't a pick. You lucked out, but you're still fumbling. Now, I know your offensive line wasn't there, and you're missing Lane Johnson, and you're missing another right guard, and you got backups in there, and Todd Bowles is throwing everything but to get the sink at you. I fully understand that. But you also have no pocket presence. You dipped a guy who was right next to you and then tried to load up and double hit you on a throw. Get rid of the ball. He's right there. If he's not on you, he's about to be. You have to feel that as a quarterback. You have to have that time in your, in your head to know, I've got to get rid of this ball right now. But you didn't. Um, you tried to run a little bit. Maybe everybody's right. You're, you're super slow right now. You can't run. And I, I don't know. I, I still believe in Jalen Hurts. I like Jalen Hurts. I, I think that playing in Philadelphia is hard, and you have to have the mentality and the right demeanor for us to handle it. But if this offensive line is 100%, and if he doesn't have one of his weapons, I, I can't trust him to get anything done. I can't trust him to do anything right now until he fixes the turnovers. Now, again, I said this is going to be a bad game for turnovers. I already knew it. And I said when he plays the Browns, he'll have a clean game. It'll be his first game with no turnovers in a long time. But after watching today, I feel skeptical about that. I feel really skeptical about that. Now, the defense showed up last week against the Saints, who were a juggernaut. And the Saints put up 24. They just lost to the Falcons today, so they bounced back a little bit on offense. They were moving the ball. And, and doing some things in a rivalry game, in division game, the teams know each other. But today, the, again, it was hot. So guys are dropping like flies and eat IVs and all this kind of stuff. But to start the game, you gave up 14 straight points. <laughs> and I mean, you're as fresh as you're going to be. And so it, it it's just amazing to me how another person's offense can look at this defense and say, oh, they were really good last week. This is how we're going to counteract that. And it takes Vic Fangio, a 38-year veteran, an entire half to make these adjustments. On the first drive, you saw what they were doing to you, and then they came out and did it on the next drive. They came out and did it on the next drive. It takes him halftime to wake up and do something each week. And by that point, like this week, it's too late. Sometimes it's going to be too late. But, I mean, my God, these people are studying you. And coming out with a game plan of what to do. Played a completely different game than what they did against the Broncos. For us. And we come out with the same old thing. 
they try to act like they wanted to give it to Barkley to start the game because they know everybody's yelling about that. They're very in tune to what people are saying on the internet and, and radio and TV and media. Maybe turn off the TV and the media and just do your job. Because the fact that you sit there every week, Nick, and say, the fans this, the fans that, the media this, the media that, I thought you were supposed to block this stuff out, bro. Don't you have a job? Or maybe you don't because you just peek your heads in meetings. So now you're listening to the radio and doing a radio show more and doing radio hits and all this kind of stuff. Um, maybe you should stop doing that. Maybe you should turn everything off and focus on your job. Focus on some film work. Kellen Moore, come up with something new because the offense looks exactly like it has for the last three years. So if this is your offense, Kellen, then I don't care about this offense. I don't care for it. I don't care about it. And it's going to be a long season. This is not a Super Bowl contending team. This is not a playoff winning team. This is not a... This is a back into the division winning team, and that's only if the commanders don't become for real with their little fake confidence that they got going. My God, that's where we are right now, and that's what's going on. Um, we got two weeks to 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 do some discipline and get some things together. I just don't have any faith in Nick Sirianni that he can do it, that he can galvanize these troops and get them to do it and bring themselves together. The Tampa Bay Bucks had friends and family and themselves lose – Property, homes, clothing, having to go to shelters, having to throw everything out in the trash. Like there were eight to 15 foot waves out there. Uh, shout out to all the people down there. Um, hope, you, hope you're safe and alive. You know, you can replace things. But all those people had to deal with something. And they came out there on a Sunday and whooped y'all like that. You know, they weren't sleeping good. You know, they had their, their family on their minds and their homes and their cars and all the kind of things they had to deal with. And they came out there and put their foot in your throats like that. Hmm. A lot of heart, a lot of want to, a lot of let's get it done, a lot of coaching and preparation, the penalties over and over and over. You're a bad team when you get as many penalties as the Eagles do. It just it just is what it is. No discipline. So I say all this to say I hate the coaches. I hate Nick. He's not going anywhere. And I can't defend Jalen this week. So if you're a Jalen hater, you can come on in and say whatever you want to say. Because, again, I knew it was going to be a turnover battle lost today because Todd Bowles, a senior coach, a defensive-minded coach, knows how to play the Eagles, and the Eagles cannot handle him or adjust for him. They just can't. Baker Mayfield out here looking like Tom Brady. Tom Brady's terrible in the booth, by the way. Um, And it's just it's disheartening going into the bye week because it's two weeks of just a game that kind of didn't matter, and if they would have lost in a normal fashion, I wouldn't have felt bad. But they lost in a fashion they did, and it's embarrassing. So now it's going to be a rough two weeks. And I'm talking very calmly because normally I rage out. That's how upset and disappointed I am. I, I can't even make fun of it. I can't even make my jokes. I can't say, like, Scooby-Doo or Mr. Magoo or anything fun or interesting because today was embarrassing. So go Birds. Go Birds. Go Birds.